What's up, y'all? It's your boy Tobias here, and baby, get your pen and paper ready, because today we heading into the kitchen, because I'm going to show y'all how to make all nasty panel collard greens and cabbage, honey, and it is going to be good. So let's get in the kitchen, and let's get to cooking. See you soon. Whipping up all of your favorite recipes Simply Food You should know by now that you're in for a treat Simply Food There's no other channel where you'd rather be Simply Food Seafood, pasta, cakes, and pies Sing and laugh and even cry Like and share and hit subscribe Simply Food by T.Y. All right, so let's get right into it. We're gonna start with some crushed red pepper flakes, some chicken bouillon flavor, which is gonna get a great depth of flavor. We're also gonna add in some Chef Paul's poultry magic seasoning, some garlic powder, as well as spike seasoning. I'm telling you, this spike seasoning is everything, okay? We're also gonna add in some onion powder as well as some apple cider vinegar. Now, as far as specific measurements, I'm gonna go in with one tablespoon of onion powder, one tablespoon of garlic powder. I'm also gonna be adding in one tablespoon of the spike seasoning. Now we're starting to incorporate the elements that's gonna have the salt, so just make sure you're keeping an eye on the measurements here, okay? We're also gonna add in one tablespoon of the chicken bouillon as well. Now, for the crushed red pepper flakes, you can adjust this to your liking, but I'm gonna add in a half a tablespoon of the red pepper flakes as well as a half a tablespoon of the poultry seasoning. And again, you can adjust all of this to your liking. This is drastically going to depend on what type of meat you choose to use. If you're gonna use pork, then you are not going to need to add any additional salt. If you don't use pork or no meat at all, then of course you're gonna to need to adjust the salting to your taste. So sit that to the side, let's talk about the collard greens. So what I have here is roughly about, about a pound, maybe a little over a pound of fresh collards here. Now, I'm not one that likes to use that bag stuff because to me, Baby, that stuff got too many stems and not enough of the leaves. And ain't nobody got time for that, especially if you're paying all that money. So I just say, get the fresh stuff and just do it yourself. It's super, super simple. Just remove the stem, throw that to the side, and then you're just gonna roll this up like you're rolling up something else. Okay. And then once you get that nice and rolled up, you're gonna get yourself a really, really nice sharp knife. And then you're just gonna cut it into strips. It's really simple. If you don't wanna cut it, honey, just rip it up. It, it is not that difficult. So you're gonna repeat this process to all all of your collard greens and then you're going to place this in a large bowl because you're nasty as hell if you don't wash your greens okay you do not want to poison your entire family so please make sure you wash your greens now i'm going to show you how i do this quickly but just know that i did this more extensively off camera now in a large bowl i have cold water with all of my greens in it i'm adding in kosher salt i'm going to repeat this process three times scrubbing it rubbing it pretty harshly so that i can get off all of the debris each time i'm going to dump it out put fresh water, add more salt. After the third time, I'm not going to use any salt. So just on the fourth time that you do this, only do water and that's gonna make sure that you get off all that salt so that you don't end up with super, super um, salty greens. I also added in a little bit of the apple cider vinegar as well. Like I say, you're just gonna repeat this process two to three times or until you see that the water is running clear. You might end up with some really clean greens, which is great, but no matter how beautiful they may look, they are still dirty. So please make sure that you are doing this process. Once you get them all nice and cleaned, go ahead and drain them off, and then you can set them to the side until we're ready to cook them. So of course, because we're making collard greens and cabbage, now let's talk about the cabbage. Now, I'm because I'm making a smaller pan of this, I'm only using one large head of cabbage. Um, again, if you guys are gonna make this for the family, you might need to double, if not triple this recipe. Um, but again, this is really simple. Literally just remove the heart of the cabbage, which is what I call it, which is the harshest part. You'll see me chop it out once again in a few seconds here. One on the right, one on the left. This little part you throw away, and then you're just gonna do it in nice little strips. Make sure you're washing your cabbage off in just cold water. You should be totally fine. You can go on ahead and sit all of your greens to the side because now all of the prep for that is done. 
Now, I like to add in shallots to my uh, mixture of greens. I don't like the harshness of regular onions. Whether it's a sweet onion or not, I'm just not a fan, so I like to use shallots, but of course you can use whatever you would like or not use onions at all. Now, I also know that there's a lot of people that like to add in bell peppers and all of that type of stuff. I'm not really into adding in peppers into my greens, but if that's what you would like to do, by all means do so. Just whatever you do, just make sure that you're cutting everything to about the same size. So that way, first of all, you can make sure that everything is cooking evenly, but also so that you can make sure that you're not ending up with like any big chunks of one particular thing, okay? Get that nice and minced up. You're gonna then put that to the side because that's all you're gonna need. And again, I this was one large shallot. I say that's probably about a half a cup worth there. You don't need any more than that. Now, as far as the meat that I'm gonna be using, I'm using a hickory smoked pork chop, as you can see. Now, you can use smoked turkey necks. You can use just regular old ham. You can use what I'm using here. It's completely up to you, or you cannot use any meat at all. But as I was stating earlier, it is going to depend on what type of meat you choose to use or choose not to use is how you're gonna have to determine how much seasoning or lack thereof that you should use, which is the reason why when you're doing stuff like this, soul food cooking, sometimes you can't always go by measurements, honey. You gotta just go in and taste it as you go because not all pork is made equally, okay? For all I know, this ham I'm working with today could be way saltier than the ham I get the next time I make it. You know what I'm saying? So it's important to make sure that you're taking all of those things into account when you're number one, working with the seasonings, and number two, picking the type of meat that you wanna work with. Because I'm using a pork, I'm not going to be adding in any additional salt to this beyond the seasonings that I already listed earlier. So as you can see, because these pork chops that I have here have the bone, I'm just removing the meat from the bone and I'm gonna set the bones to the side. Do not throw that away because it's all going in the pot. I'm just simply chopping down the meat so that I can have that nicely separated and ready to go. Once you get that good to go, now we can go on ahead and move over to our pot. Everything's going in the same pot, honey. Go on ahead and add in all of your ham pieces or, you know, whatever cut of meat that you're going to be using. And then, like I said, I'm also going to add in those bones because that's going to add in some great flavor. I'm also now going to add in my shallots. And you don't see me doing it on camera, but I also added in two tablespoons of olive oil. You can use whatever type of oil you would like, but you don't need that much because the ham is gonna have a lot of oil in itself. You're gonna let that cook down until you start to see your onions start to kind of wilt a little bit, get a little bit translucent. And then you're gonna add in about a tablespoon of the Better Than Bullion chicken base. You don't need to add too much. Once again, this is also gonna be another element of salt, which is the reason why we're not gonna be adding in any seasonal salt or actual salt to this dish. Trust me, this is jam packed with flavor and it is not missing no type of salt at all. Give that a good mix around just so that you can make sure that all that's nicely incorporated because once we add the water to this later on, that's gonna create a nice broth. So right now we're building in all of our flavors. So now that that's good to go, we're gonna add in about a half a cup to one cup of water. You don't wanna add in too much liquid because you don't want your greens swimming in liquid. This is not like your normal pot of collard greens or your normal pot of cabbage. You know, we're making a cabbage and collard green medley. And so I don't want it to have as much liquid, but if you want yours to have a little bit more of like a soup base, by all means. But just remember, both the kale and especially that cabbage retains a lot of water. Once you get everything in, just go on ahead and put the top on it so that it can start to kind of wilt down a bit. This should only take maybe about maybe five to 10 minutes, especially if you already have it kind of boiling. Once it's already started to wilt down, go on ahead and give it a mix around. And if at this stage, if you notice that you have an excessive amount of water in that pot, go on ahead and drain some of it off before you add in your seasoning. Once again, if you want to have a lot of soup left or a lot of broth left, then just leave it. That's completely fine. But remember, cabbage and both kale has a lot of water. So keep that in mind. I've gone on ahead and added in all of those seasonings. We're gonna go on ahead and give that a good old nasty mix, honey. Make sure that everything is fully incorporated, honey. Now, once again, like I said earlier, the crushed red pepper flakes, that is gonna give this a bit of a kick. It's not gonna make it super spicy, but it's definitely gonna have a kick. So you can omit that altogether if you don't want any type of kick at all. But I personally think that it tastes delicious with that little, you know, just that little bit of spice. 
So once we get all of that incorporated, you're going to go on ahead and put the top back on this, but go on ahead and leave it kind of cracked because again, we want to start to reduce as much liquid in it as possible. Now for me, this only took maybe about 45 minutes. So in the last 15 minutes working up to the full hour of cooking time, that's when you go on ahead and add in your apple cider vinegar in about the last 15 minutes. And that's it. There's not really much more that you have to really do to this. Like I said, you know, as far as the cooking time is concerned, you know, that really is just going to depend on what the texture is that you like, whether you like it to be a bit more on the softer side or to have a bit more of a crunch to it. But all in all, you guys, that's it. This is one of my favorite ways to eat collard greens greens and cabbage all at the same time. Sometimes you just don't feel like being bothered with creating two separate dishes. And this is a hit. Do you hear me? Look, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. If you guys enjoyed what you saw, please hit that thumbs up button and also subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to seeing y'all next time. Bye y'all.